Um, so really what I'm going to do now is just walk you through the scheme, what it is that we're, what the criteria are and the dates, so that the technicalities of it, I, I suppose. Um, just the background or, or a recap. Um, it relies on the strength of local communities and businesses supported by local and national government and other agencies. Um, I think what we've seen in a lot of these towns is that the state can't do it all on its own. It, can, it, it, it cannot make or affect any change in these towns um, without support of the local community. Um, we saw it with Alice in the Town Centre Health Checks, the Chambers of Commerce, um, traders, um, local academic partnerships. Um, and what we tried in 2018, and what we're going to try again in 2019, is to provide support to strike and engage in a program of heritage led regeneration. Um, there's a book here that we did in 2018, Bally Brilliant. Um, in addition to the guidance mentioned in the um, from the Historic Towns Initiative, there's some more. You might get some more inspiration on heritage led regeneration in five Irish towns. We did this last 2018. Um, and it, it just gives some of the nuts and bolts of what heritage level generation is or what we've perceived it to be or what we've learned it to be in Ireland over the past 10 odd years or so. So in 2019, as of last year, there's a million euro, which is capital funding. Um, so when you saw community engagement projects here done as part of these projects, they weren't funded through the HTI. Um, they were funded through other sources um, of current funding that the local authorities had from, from other pots. So this is capital funding we're talking about. I think that's an important point. Um, the other important point then is each local authority puts forward one application. So for each local authority, you pick your town. And the expression I had for it last year was, put your best foot forward. If there's a town that you think is a compelling case, um, decide an internal discussion um, in your own organization as to which one it is. Um, and the reason for that is we want to try to support a small number of towns. We're talking um, about five, six, seven grants. So one town per local authority functional area. Um, each application will be assessed by a HTI National Steering Group. Now that's essentially the Heritage Council, uh, the Department of Culture, Heritage, and Gale Talked, and we have a representative of Forge Ireland as well. Uh, so that, that, that steering group then makes recommendations to the Board of the Heritage Council for funding. Um, the Board will receive recommendations, I think it's the, around the 21st of February, so we'd be hoping to get the letters out immediately thereafter, and that means we've pulled back time on last year, I think by about three weeks, because I do, I do realise that it's quite time pressured last year. Um, in terms of priority then, we'd like to see applications that are plan-led. Now, what does that mean? Um, a HTI management plan based on the HTI framework. The details of that are online and they're in, this, they're in the, the guidance document that we have for you. Uh, might be a conservation plan, a public realm plan, or eligible actions from a town centre health check plan or equivalent. Um, what we really like to see is local authorities who are the actual applicants, the drivers, working with a range of partnerships in delivering the projects. So show us letters of support. Uh, it might be traders groups, it might be a chamber of commerce, it might be individual traders or people that own a particular property. Um, show it, because it goes back to that point that the state or local government cannot do all of this on its own. Um, so there's the order of funding we expect to allocate per town, 150 to 200. So that's the kind of money to apply for, that's the kind of money to seek. Um, so. And then obviously as well, show, try to show strong public engagement. Heritage Week, it's the end of August again this year. Um, it, it just brings people with you and it shows, it shows that the state and that a town is actually striving and moving to make changes. <coughs> All of the events that we saw this year had some public outreach and it, it added value and it added a presence. I think they were all, all worthwhile, which we saw from particular from Port Leash, Kilmarnock, um, and Ballon Road. So, what towns are eligible? Well, almost all Irish historic towns are all, almost all Irish towns are historic in origin. Um, but what we'd be looking for is significant history of assets. Um, so it could be anything. 
medieval, pre-medieval plantation plans, um, and even even this year, uh, or, sorry, 2018, uh, we funded everything from the medieval town of Yall uh, to Ballinrobe. Okay, it's it's the oldest town in Mayo, but most of its built fabric seems to um, be fought from the 18th century. Um, so um, we're we're not we don't have any preconceived notions about dates or periods. Um, Especially the generation areas under the Living City Initiative are not eligible to apply. So really that rules out the, it's the five large cities, that particular zoned area. Um, what works are eligible? Um, capital works to repair and enhance the heritage of the town. Um, heritage led regeneration projects which are designed and implemented by local authorities. And I think you'll see there's, there's room in a lot of these for you to make that case. Um, projects that encourage private owners and occupiers to invest in appropriate conservation-led works uh, to bring vacant floor area and historic buildings back into use. Um, that would be good to see, and I do realise that that's a tricky nut to crack, uh, but that we would like to see that. Um, and I think the essence of heritage-led regeneration in our, our earlier guidance and in the Bally Brilliant publication is sending out a signal of confidence to the private sector to invest, to, to follow in, um, to follow up on, on an initial state action or to do it in partnership. Um, so things like that. Um, addressing dereliction. Uh, as in Ballard Road, the conservation of landmark buildings, um, maintenance and improvements to streetscapes, uh, as in Carrick and Shore, uh, conservation of public realm works uh, in Yaw, which we didn't hear about this morning, but um, they basically revitalised public space around the historic clock tower. Um, and then just kind of normal rules that you're used to working with. Um, respect the character and special interest of individual buildings. And statutory requirements for the protection of heritage must be met. Um, and we will make this presentation available. In fact, most of it is in the, is in the guidelines that you have. Um, so the application process. Again, one historic town. Um, with an indicative minimum population level of 1,500. So we'd like to see something over 1,500. Um, and we did reject one application last year that we felt was, was a little bit well under uh, that figure of 1,500. Um, so, in your application, you said that the significance of the town and its heritage, the relevant policies in your, your various development plans, the track record to date, in heritage and regeneration, the involvement of heritage personnel, and the vision. What is the vision? Alison talked about um, that kind of blue skies idea. Where, where do you see your town going? Um, part two of, of that application process. Um, tell us what, what, what it is that you're seeking to be funding and how this would promote heritage led regeneration. Um, what are your partnerships, including letters of support? Um, the extensive matching funding, the contribution in kind proposed, and I'll come back to that, um, and leadership. Um, that's crucial. Who's driving this in the local authority? Who's the champion? Who's pushing it? Who's responsible? Who do we talk to? Um, who do we come and meet? Um, so that's really important as well. So the criteria. What do we mark this under when we sit down um, just after the closing date? Um, Applications will be assessed under the following criteria. Um, there's five bullets here. It's marked out of 100, so it gets 20, to get 20 points each. Um, the significance of the town and its heritage. So tell us about it. Tell us why it's important. Tell us about the town's track record to date in caring for its heritage. Um, the extent to which it fulfills the aims of the HDI. Um, so the aims are all set out in the guidance document that you have. Um, the quality of the project proposed. Um, and then the presence of a vibrant and engaged community. So, quote these issues back to us. Build your application around these criteria. Um, they're, they're pretty straightforward. Um, and then, this is my last slide. Um, applications will only be accepted from local authorities. Each local authority may apply for funding for one historic town. And then applications are on the Heritage Council's online system. We, we won't take paper applications, but I think that's, 
that's something people are, are well used to at this stage. Um, so here's the closing date, Friday the 8th of February at 5pm, that's online. Um, there's our deadline for drawdowns, Monday the 11th of November. Um, and we, we don't have a lot of flexibility beyond this. The monies have to be spent in 2019. And that's, that's a really important detail. Um, in terms of matching funding, which I should have mentioned earlier, we expect a 20% contribution in cash from the local authority. So you will get up to 80% funding. Um, we will not cover in-kind costs or expenses generated by a local authority. Um, but we still feel that this is quite a generous scheme. Um, and it, again, I stress, it is capital. Um, so, I think the expression last year that worked well was put your best foot forward. The criteria, they're there, you've seen the assessment criteria, um, gone through the market. Um, the criteria are open enough to make the argument that the various projects that you're thinking about, how they fit. And I think in 2018, we funded a broad canvas of projects within those criteria. So thank you, and I'd love some questions.